And and at what level do you see Jonathan Islam as a response to what was perceived to be uh, a heretical view of, sure. of a polygamous kind of god? Sure. Well, the Quran actually renounces the Trinity on multiple occasions. Um, so, for example, in Surah Al-Maida, uh, verse 73, it says, Surely the disbelievers are those who say Allah is the third of the three, when there is no God but one God. You find a similar verse in Surah An-Nisa, verse 171, where, um, where we read, Do not say three. And then it goes on again to affirm the truth of monotheism, there is no God but one God. And every mm. time the, the Quran actually denounces the doctrine of the Trinity, it then affirms monotheism. And if you continue to read in Surah Al-Maida, um, after verse 73, when you come to verse 75, it says, Jesus and the son of Miriam was no more than that messenger. They'd been messengers before him. His mother was very truthful. Mm. Um, and you wonder, you know, why would it say that, um, it goes on to say that they both used to eat food. Why would Mary eat food? Why would it say that Mary would eat food? Surely mm. that should be mm. obvious, mm. right? You keep reading the context and you get right down to verse 116, which says, which says, Jesus, the son of Mary, um, Allah will say to Jesus, the son of Mary, and Jesus, did you say unto mankind to take yourself on your mother as two gods in derogation of Allah? The one time where three individuals are mentioned, it's Allah, Jesus, and Mary. That's interesting. Rather than to the Father, right. Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and indeed, in, in Surah Al-Anam, which is the sixth chapter of the Quran, verse 101, it says, far be it from Allah, he should beget a son. How can he have a son when he ever had a wife? Well, and so- well this takes us into territory that we'll want sure. to open up and, and allow, obviously, Abdul Rahim to respond on as to whether the Quran has adequately represented the, the Christian view of the Trinity anyway. But before we get to that, let me just say, if you're listening and you'd like to respond to anything you hear on today's programme, you're more than welcome to send me an email. Unbelievable at premier.org.uk is the usual email address. And we'll get to some of your feedback later on in today's programme to some recent shows. Don't forget you can find us online as well at premierchristianradio.com slash unbelievable. You can leave a comment under today's show. You can find links to the podcast and other resources And, of course, there are ways to get in touch via Twitter and Facebook. I'll give those out later on in the programme as well. Unbelievable with Justin Brierley. So our topic today, what is God like? Tawheed or Trinity? Abdul Rahim Green, a British convert to Islam, is debating Jonathan McClatchy, a Christian guest on today's programme. On this, um, what is, you know, an age old debate uh, and one that distinctly separates Islam from Christianity in many ways. It's about the most one of the most fundamental ones. And, and, and it'll have in its encom- it'll encompass the whole question of whether Jesus claimed to be divine uh, in the New Testament and uh, whether you can even even make sense of the concept of the Trinity and, and so on. Um, so we be- began sort of there talking, um, Jonathan talking, Abdul Rahim, about the fact that he doesn't think necessarily that the Quran actually represents uh, accurately the Christian view of the Trinity. They say in one portion that it's Jesus, Mary and God, effectively. What's your response to that? I think my response is it doesn't actually really matter um, it's a bit of a straw man. It's a bit of a red herring. I think what is important is the Quran deals with concepts. And I think that a lot of Christians would recognize, for example, a lot of Protestants would recognize something that, something that is known as Mariolatry, the worship of Mary. And there certainly were primitive Christian sects um, who don't exist anymore who uh, had the concept of Mary as a divine being. And also we have to understand the concept of worship in Islam. When the Qur'an says that uh, that, uh, Mary is taken as a god, it doesn't mean here that uh, people believe that Mary is somehow a creator or a co-being or a part of a trinity or whatever other pantheon of gods it may be. Um, Anyone who is prayed to, anyone who is supplicated to, if we supplicate and pray to and seek, for example, uh, saints as intercessors between us and God, that we make them into gods. Even the Qur'an talks about taking priests and rabbis as gods. And in that particular case, it's referring to when priests and rabbis, for example, legislate or they, they make something that God has forbidden, they make it allowed, or something that God has allowed, they make it forbidden. So again, in that particular concept, a person who would mm. accept that would be taking... So the point here, this goes back to the concept of Tawheed, is that the concept of Tawheed means that God has certain attributes, God has certain qualities, and no created thing shares those attributes and qualities with God. 
And so the, the underlying concept is here is this is the essential message of all the prophets, that God has unique qualities and attributes. And where human beings have gone wrong throughout history is they have uh, believed that some created thing, uh, whether it's Mary or Jesus or mm. an idol or a priest or a rabbi or a king or even just yeah. money or even your own desires, people have given those created things some of the attributes yeah, and qualities the, a, a that belong divine to, status. to God. Yeah, so I think the actual details of whether the Qur'an expounds what is understood today by Christians as the Trinity is irrelevant. Uh, what okay. is important do, is, do you... is the broad... Concepts. Certainly there were concepts of Trinity similar to that that have existed in the past. So it doesn't really matter. Right. The point